Hey guys, welcome to the Physique Development channel. We've gotten a ton of requests to show you guys what our home gym looks like, and today we're gonna give you all the details on that. So we started this home gym about two or three years ago, and we're gonna go ahead and walk you through what pieces we have, the pricing, as well as why we got them and what role they play in our gym. So let's go. Let's head on in. At the core of building out this gym, my biggest goal was to be able to target every muscle group through every different length. And so be able to target every muscle in the lengthened position, in the mid-range, and in the shortened position. And so now we have all the equipment available to do that. And everyone knows you've been to those gyms where it's like, I can really only get a good leg day here or a good back day here. You can get a good every day here. With the brands that we utilized, our favorite is going to be Prime Fitness. And the reason for that is one, Prime is going to be the absolute highest quality. When we're talking about the lengthened, mid-range, and short position, that a lot of their equipment that is going to be like the lying leg curl, like the leg extension, is going to be able to emphasize those different lengths by loading the plates in different fashions. And so we'll dig into that when we get to that equipment specifically. While physique development is very science-based and education-based, so is Prime Fitness. They have incredible customer service. Again, the best the steel, steel. baby. <laughs> <laughs> and incredible people working on the brand that share a similar passion like Alex and I do about the human body, about training and being able to be the best of the best. They are constantly working to improve the equipment time and time again and make it better for the individual. And that's why I resonate so much with them. As Sue told you, I am not a budget guy. I am all about getting the best and that is them. <laughs> this is not sponsored by Prime. Let's go ahead and dig into the equipment. The first piece that we started with, and this was at the tip top of my list when we had decided we were going to have our own home gym, was the Prime Prodigy Rack. This is a very, very versatile piece. When individuals come to us, uh, whether it be clients or individuals coming from social media, they ask, what should I start with? I'm starting my own home gym. This is the piece that I recommend 10 times out of 10. Uh, the versatility is endless. You can, with all the attachments, you have 115 total exercises that can be performed in this piece of equipment. You have a cable pulley here. This is the lighter cable as a whole. So the weight itself goes all the way to 350. This is going to be the heavier cable. So this is going to be more used for pull downs and, and those different things where this is going to be more useful. Uh, within like curls and tricep pushdowns and those different aspects. And I think that this is a really great creative aspect to things because more often than not, when manufacturing companies are creating this type of equipment, they're only gonna have this cable here where it's a great cable in terms of the weight that's being distributed, but it's not going to be heavy enough to perform the pull downs. And this was a really smart thing by Prime to have both of these and create such versatility uh, when creating this piece. Now, I had talked about the pull downs. You have a seat that attaches and you can perform the pull downs there. You have the J hooks in which you could also put on here for back squats and those different factors. You have the ability to do pull ups, the ability to have like a foot plate and be able to do a horizontal row or anything like that. It's my favorite, it's, it's the, the piece that I was so happy to start with and the piece that we've probably used the absolute most since we got the home gym started. Next up, we're over here at the leg extension. So Prime does make a piece that's a two-in-one piece, but when we ordered, they did not have it available. So we do have the Prime leg extension, and then we'll show you the Prime lying leg curl here in a second. And the reason that we really prioritized having the leg extension is like Alex said at the beginning of the video, we wanted to be able to train each resistance profile and each muscle in the short and length and mid range. And a a leg extension is really the only way that you can hit your quads in a fully shortened range. So being able to have the leg extension was a definite must for us. And with the prime piece, you're going to have a great ability or versatility to be able to load the quads differently. So one of the beautiful things is that I could set up like a superset in this leg extension and start with challenging myself in the shortened range. So when my legs are, are fully extended and then I could move the plates and be able to challenge myself at the bottom range. And so it's, it allows for you to do a lot of different things in a small amount of space. And that's the name of the game when you're talking home gyms. 
All right, now we are over to the lying leg curl. Alex, why did we choose this? With getting the hamstrings fully shortened, you've got two options. You have the seated and you have the lying. The lying is going to be a better option when we're wanting to get the hamstrings in the fully shortened position. We have to have a slight degree of hip flexion, which this provides, and then you're going to train into the greatest degree of knee flexion, and that's going to get the hamstrings in that fully shortened position. And it's very hard to get into. Where the pegs are placed allow for us to challenge the hamstring in different lengths, so we're able to challenge again in the fully shortened position or potentially in the lengthened or mid-range. Next up, we have the dumbbells and the dumbbell rack. And so this was a challenge to find a dumbbell rack that was going to be a four tier. So when you are searching for dumbbell racks, a lot of them are going to either be two tier, you may find some three tier, but it's going to take up a lot of floor real estate when finding a home for all these dumbbells. And so I found a, a four tier, and this is made by Legend Fitness. The one thing with Legend Fitness equipment is it is all welded when sent to you. So this is all one piece. The dumbbells that we have, the brand that we have for a majority of them is GP. The main thing I'm looking for with dumbbells is going to be the circumference of the handle. And I don't have like a, a measurement to, to tell you. I was more so going off of what I enjoyed and what felt good in my hands and I had used GP dumbbells as they performed, this is probably going to be the first thing that we sell. So if you're interested in them, give me a price, I guess, five to 100 LMK. Um, and I would like to replace them with Umax. Umax is going to be my absolute favorite dumbbells. Umax or Intec are going to be the two brands that I really like from a dumbbell standpoint. We have the 120s from Umax. I would like to actually replace all these with just be all Umax, um, but that is the dumbbell brand that we have now. And then finding this, this four tier, I can't express to you enough of utilizing a four tier uh, dumbbell rack. I know that Prime has, I believe, a three or four tier and the bottom one slides out. How sweet. Um, but this is the one we got. Now we have the leg press, and this was probably the only compromise Alex really made when going to put everything together. He wanted a Cybex hack squat through and through. He has worked out at God knows how many gyms and he has worked at gyms. So again, he has the lay of the land of equipment and he loves, loves, loves the Cybex hack squat. But he also knew for his wife to grow the best glutes and to really get the most out of her leg sessions that the Cybex squat press would be a better option. The aspect and with leg presses in a home gym, more often than not, the leg press is going to take up way too much space to even be an option. This Cybex uh, squat press, I believe is what it's called, or the, uh, the Cybex hack squat, both of them are not going to be a huge footprint, so they're great for a home gym. The only issue with this piece that we've run into is that it's pretty light. So for stronger individuals who are going to be going for maybe a lower rep range, I would highly encourage getting 100 pound plates. Um, we've got a couple of them here. I'd like to order a couple more, but these are going to be great. They are just an absolute bear to pick up. Right, so we'll just head right on over to our barbells. So we have a multi-grip bar, which is honestly a bar that I didn't think that I would love as much as I did. It was one of the first bars that we got in when equipment started coming in. This is phenomenal because it does have the slant to the bar for gripping. So we use it for flat presses or incline presses, or you can even use it for like a bent over row. And it just does allow you to not be in such a fixed position for your wrist. If you were doing like an incline press and had your hand here versus having that slant to it. Then we do have two barbells here. So we have a Rogue Ohio bar, and then this is a Texas power bar. And Alex will give you some insight as to why he ordered each of them. When we first got the barbells, we didn't have what will be this next piece, which is the Smith machine. And so Sue was performing a, a lot of barbell hip thrust. And so with the Ohio bar, you have very light knurling, so you're not going to tear up your very expensive leggings. The Texas bar is going to have much, much deeper knurling, um, and is gonna be great for actually like holding onto the bar and, and pulling hard. If you've got calluses, you're probably gonna rip them off with that. The holder there, if you can get that, Miguel, is from Elite FTS. I think they have, uh, that's just the, the four bar. They can, I think they have like a six, they've got an eight, I think they'd go up to like 12. 
All right, on to another piece that my husband got for me for my glutes. <laughs> no, he does love this movement. We knew we wanted to educate on this movement, and it's just great to be able to have the variance of this when it comes to leg days. But he was very particular when it came to the brand that we used, because there are some brands that are literally made for giants, and he was very great at taking my body size into account. The great thing with this piece is that you can vary the the degree in which you are hip hinging here as a whole. So you can go down to 35 degrees and as high as 55 degrees. The versatility in terms of the height of the pad is another piece here. So this comes down uh, very low and then can also be very high. So you have great versatility there. Nautilus does a good job with their equipment in my eyes. And another thing with having this piece of equipment is that when you're training the glutes through the shortened range of motion, the only way to really go about that is going to be through a glute bridge, or a, a hip thrust, and then you have the 45 degree hip extension or a, a kickback. And so when I'm trying to basically create a glute lab for my wife, this is a necessity, right? So you've got the leg press, you've got the 45 degree hip extension, all the fun stuff. So this was a, a necessity for the goals at hand. I think that as we progress, this is a piece that will forever stay. All right, now we're getting into two pieces, or actually three pieces of equipment that we got when we moved about nine months ago. We had a little bit more space, and what do you do with more space? You fill it with more gym equipment. <laughs> I've actually really fallen in love with the Smith machine and been able to do a lot of movements and been able to get a lot of success out of those movements. So some of my favorite movements to use are definitely the hip thrust or glute bridge, as well as being able to do a bent knee RDL. I absolutely love doing it in the Smith machine, as well as a front foot elevated reverse lunge. They, those are all faves of mine that I do in the Smith machine a lot, as well as seated calf raises and standing calf raises. Definitely a more luxury piece, as some of these pieces that we've walked through have been more of a necessity if you're going to be building out a home gym. This is one where if you've got the extra space, if you've got the extra funds, I would still recommend grabbing this one. I like the Cybex mostly because one, the quality is very good. I love the look of, of Cybex equipment, uh, that this matte black that they have is fantastic. Um, but also the, the bar itself is on a, just a vertical uh, bar path, whereas some Smith machines are going to have a slanted bar path. And when we're utilizing it for the uh, components that we are, this is a much better fit for that relative to the, the slope uh, bar path that some of them have. And another reason that we got the Smith machine is at the old house, we had a weight tree to put on all of our plates. And when we were realizing how the space was just magically disappearing in front of our eyes as we added more and more equipment, there was not really space for a weight tree. So our options were to get pegs added on to the Prodigy rack or to go ahead and get something that already had pegs on it. So this was great for the storage of our plates. And and to talk through our plates, we do have Intech plates and Rogue plates. So Alex, why'd we get Intech? I honestly like how they look. The, the, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here that is going to be like, I like how it looks. Um, I, I'm big on the visual appearance of things and, and getting me into the best state to really uh, enjoy training. So the Intech ones, I like how they look. The um, Urethrin, Urethrin. Yeah, your reference. Mm -hmm. uh, the material that's uh, around the plate itself. I didn't want just metal plates, especially being out here um, in the gym, having the garage door open. I didn't want humidity to be tearing up the plates and those different factors. Um, so that was a, an easy way to kind of work around that. They are a little bit more pricey. And then we have the bumper plates from Rogue. Uh, I wouldn't say there's anything necessarily special about those bumper plates. I actually would like the bumper plates to be thinner. When you're purchasing plates, pay attention to the width. I, I, the, the visual appearance of these Intech ones are great, but they are a little bit thicker than I would like. The plates that I, if I was just no budget and I was picking the ones that I want for sure, the UMAX plates, I'm, I guess I'm the biggest UMAX fan mm. in the world. Um, their plates are fantastic. They're a little bit thinner than these Intech ones. And especially when you're loading up the trap bar or you're loading up this leg press, it's an opportunity to be able to add maybe one or two more plates just because of the width of the plates themselves. 
And another benefit of the Prime stuff as like the leg extension and the lying leg curl is not only does it have the three pegs to change the resistance, but as an extra peg to store plates on. So we do have to, even with this fully filled out, have to store some on the other pieces of equipment. But I did want to note that because that's great for storage, especially if you're looking at a smaller space. So since we're standing right here, I am going to talk about these DC blocks. And I absolutely love having these because first for the bench that we have, which we'll get into, um, it's a little tiny bit too high for me for doing hip thrust or glute bridge. So being able to put one of these boxes, great for me to be able to get to that fully shortened position. And I will add for the DC blocks if you are wanting to purchase them. I don't have a better option for you when we're looking at this piece. That My biggest qualm with them is that they're slick. Um, so if you're maybe stepping up and doing something a little bit more athletic, be careful. Uh, if you're just doing something that's more stable, like what Sue's talking about, where she's elevating her feet for the glute bridge or for the back foot on the split squat, um, not a huge deal. They're, they're a slick material, so just be careful with that. So this is going to be the hammer strength isolateral row. And I don't know why it just holds a near and dear place in my heart. I've just had a lot of positive gym experiences on it. That's all, I like it a lot. And there's really not another brand that does this piece the way that I personally like to use it or the way that Alex personally likes to use it. Yeah, this is a, another one of those luxury pieces uh, that I would put on your list. If you have the space, if you enjoy the movements that you can perform here, go ahead and grab it. I think that for us, we utilize it for lat training. Um, we have like a step back row and then a kneeling row that we have learned from N1 Education on this. And then we also use this for some rear delt rows as well. There's a different feeling from a plated machine to a cable to a dumbbell. And so from like a sensation and enjoyment standpoint, having something that's just like the, the plates are clanging and you get to train hard is just a, an enjoyment aspect that I wanted to have. All right, we're almost getting to the end here. We wanted to talk about another prime piece of equipment and this is going to be the prime trap bar. Now I will go ahead and put a disclaimer. This is not a 45 pound trap bar and I found that out after I had lifted with it a few times and thought that I was getting weaker but it is we think about 72 pounds. Between 70 and 75 pounds is going to be the weight of this bar. The company of Prime knows we're just not remembering. <laughs> I, I want to make that very, very clear is that <laughs> they know what weight it is. Um, the beauty of this, and this is one of those pieces that I feel as though everyone should have in their home gym because you have so much versatility with it being a half cage. You have the ability to move the handles so you can, for a taller or uh, shorter individual, you can adjust it to that person. You have extremely long loading arms here so you can put, a t I mean, a ton of weight on this um, and you can do so much. I mean, you can do like, you could do a farmer's carry with it uh, as like a extra thing. You can do all the trap bar deadlift. You can do it in RDL, you can do rows. Um, this is one of their pieces that I'm just like one of their biggest fans on because I, I don't think that anyone else in the space has done it as well as they have. There are certainly similar pieces, but in terms of really setting themselves apart, this is one of their pieces that I'm like, you guys crushed this and, and I'm a, a big fan of. And again, they take a lot of the small details into consideration. So the handles moving is a great aspect of it. You can actually get different handles on this. If you don't want just a normal handle, you can get like a rotate handle on it if you want. But they also have it so you can prop it up so when you put on weight that it's not scraping on the ground and you're not having to like lift the bar and shovel it on. And then you just turn it, pick it up and go ahead and lift. So a lot of details that are taken into consideration and a lot of like coming into the mind of someone who's training and thinking what is going to help them while they're training and they thought of it. So we're gonna get into another prime piece here, which are going to be these prime wedges. So we do use these a decent amount with the trap bar, but we also use these for a barbell back squat. We use them for split squats. Getting into the prime functional trainer. Now, Alex, why did we need more cables when we already got cables here? So I love training with my wife. I find it very, fun. It's, it was one of the ways that we connected a bunch when we first started dating. So we've got two sets of cables so that we can be out here training together. 
Also, if we have supersets that are cable centric, again, having both of these is going to be definitely a, a luxury for sure. You do not need both of them. Um, in terms of if I was trying to choose between the Prodigy Rack and then getting the Functional Trainer, if you have a squat rack already, then I would probably just say to get the functional trainer, you've got a little bit more versatility with these arms being able to rotate and you may run into some issues with the uh, Prodigy Rack because those are fixed. So you have a little bit of greater versatility with the, uh, the arms here. The weight stacks themselves, I believe are a little bit lighter. Honestly, this is the best functional trainer as well. How versatile these arms are. Like this, I, I think that I keep talking about it because of how valuable this is for these to be able to move so easily. All right, the last two main pieces of equipment before we get into some odds and ends that you might wanna take into consideration for having a home gym are two, can you guess it, prime benches. <laughs> so this is going to be the prime adjustable bench and this is going to be the prime XL bench. It's still adjustable, but it definitely is XL. So the differences between these two are that the adjustable bench is going to be very light. Um, it's gonna be at a lower price point as well relative to the XL. With this, you're going to have a varying degrees and they're all outlined on the back of the bench, which is nice in terms of understanding how much of an incline you're going to be utilizing. And then the, the seat itself also adjusts. So if you're having the incline, you can uh, pitch the, the seat up a little bit more so you're sitting back into the incline. The XL bench, this one is the, the heavy duty. If you had to pick between these two of just having one for your home gym, I would pick the adjustable bench. This is significantly heavier. And when I say significantly, I mean it. Um, there's a little bit more versatility with this piece, whereas um, you can attach this to either the functional trainer, there's a, another piece that's there, or you can attach it in the Prodigy Rack for it to be like locked in. You also have the availability to like scoot this up and scoot this back, um, just in case somebody was to be spotting you on these foot plates to where they can stand up and not be potentially teabagging you in this whole process. <laughs> so it's a little bit easier. And then you can obviously incline just as you did with the adjustable bench and then the, the seat pitches up as well. So I love both of these. If I had to pick only one to have, I probably would still pick the adjustable bench um, just because of the simplicity and not jamming my feet or my toes on this one because I do that quite often. So those few odds and ends things that I mentioned, one of them's gonna be the flooring. So the flooring that we have in place here, we actually would love to replace it because as I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit too thin. Now at our old house, we just had horse mats. So we literally went to, what's it called? Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply and got horse mats and put them down. And we had pretty thick ones in place. I honestly would prefer those, horse if we had those horse mats here, that would be better. But the thicker flooring, the better, just being able to not tear up the foundation and be able to drop barbells on it and those different things. We also have the, the sound panels. And I found uh, a company called called Genesis Audio here in Columbus, Ohio, and they were willing to do it. And the, the panels themselves are expensive, but they come out and install them. If you're recording in the way that we are, um, I would highly encourage that, as well as it, it dampens the sound a little bit from the speakers and those different aspects, because Sue's office is right above this. Um, she can still definitely hear the music, but it's less loud than it once was. Kind of. Sure. Um, and then the final thing is going to be the speakers. And so the speakers are connected to the Control 4 system that we use here. Um, and that is also from Genesis Audio. They got it all hooked up and it's fantastic. You just control it from your phone. The speakers are in the wall. It's sick. And uh, I will say there is one more piece, a dehumidifier. So if you are having your space in a gym where there is gonna be humidity gathering, that can really tear up a lot of your equipment. We still are very particular about keeping things clean and being able to just uphold the quality of the equipment as a whole. We take care of our equipment also by having the dehumidifier in place. It gets humid in these Ohio summers if we have the garage door open and that would be miserable to have spent so much money on things we love so much and have to replace it due to something we could have controlled. That's that, that's our home gym, the tour, the pricing, the reasoning, everything. If you have questions on anything we talked about, definitely comment down below and Alex and I will jump in and make sure that we give you the answers that you need. And we will be doing another video on if we had to start over, what pieces would we do so we can continue to help so that you know what would be best for building out your own home gym. 
Get out. Get. Get, boy. Get. You got to get out of here now. See you guys later. That's all. Bye. Sorry to interrupt, but have you hit the subscribe button yet? I mean, really, right now. It's somewhere over here, but go ahead and hit subscribe.